Hello there. This is Culture Train, speaking you from the uh, Spirit of Nigeria region, where we've been the diaspora of the sea. My name is Jaman and I'm reaching you from Culture City, Lagos. And I always say Lagos is the center of Nigeria, Lagos is the center of Africa, Lagos is the center of the world. The most active cultural producing center is Lagos. And Lagos is also the most producing cultural expression center for the world. So I welcome you. And um, I know uh, many, many of you will be wondering why we don't have so many people in the, in the Zoom room. The Zoom room is just for recording. Our listeners are mostly in the cloud. Because this is, this is an internet radio where we bring the diaspora up to speed. A lot of people are listening to us outside of the Zoom. For the Zoom, you just for to have some recording of this. So do not be discouraged by the number of things you have in the Zoom room. Uh, we, we, our listenership is just out there. Uh, let me welcome someone I've not seen for a long time, Ngozi Emedoli, a fantastic art reporter, a journalist who has always been uh, part of my, my own cultural uh, reporting experience. And I'm happy to have Ngozi here. Uh, for people who may not know, Ngozi is a man. <laughs> The first time I encountered him, I asked him, Ngozi, why are you Ngozi? Are you not supposed to be a man? And he told me that the name is actually UNICEF. That's the beauty of Africa. Ngozi, you're welcome. Everybody, you're welcome. Those who are listening to us, this cultural train of Spirit of Nigeria Radio. And we hope that you'll be able to join us as we go ahead. Um, today, so many things are happening. But uh, let, 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 let's start with something that is so unique that is going on. Um, Go to me, my back end, and I, if you are there, can you play that video of what is happening in Yaba, and then we can take it from there. The saying, not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers, is a driving force behind the move by Boradi Olaumi, a Nigerian Guinness Book of Record holder. Through his non government organization, I Read in Africa Foundation, he has commenced another edition of the Read Aloud contest to help spur the reading culture in children. Our correspondent, Mojisa Lamatoni, tells us more in this report. Bridge to Build initiative by the I Read Africa Foundation is the first of its kind in Nigeria that is geared towards building well equipped libraries across rural areas in the country. Volunteers drawn from different geopolitical regions of the country will attempt to read for 480 hours in the longest marathon read aloud category. The brain behind this initiative, Bayode Olaumi, says the move is born out of his passion to make the reading culture more attractive and appeal especially to the younger generation. In 2018, Bayode pulled off an audacious attempt at the Guinness World Record of the longest reading marathon, getting read aloud for five days in 123 hours, which inspired lots of people and saw a spike in public reading, book clubs, and literacy related events. My target was not to write a person, right? My target was to promote reading, right? Because if my target was that, right? or to eat or to run for the record, right? But I want to say that they read for the record, right? Because the, the, the target was to promote a healthy reading culture in Nigeria. That was why I came up with this, in, in a, I would call it with an idea. I target read to read. Read to read. That means how we reading with four other Nigerians. We are reading to raise funds to build libraries across the country, especially in the rural areas where these children, the youth are deprived of functional libraries. Yemi Dobra, a microbiology first class graduate from the University of Novena, couldn't either join despite the challenges faced in ensuring the goal of the initiative is achieved. It's been awesome, honestly, because experiencing something new, experiencing something you haven't experienced before, it's quite it's something, honestly. And I have discovered a lot about myself. I have put more value on, on Nigerian authors. They are so good. So even as we read, it's beyond reading. We take this, we understand what the authors are driving at and how beautiful Africa is and how talented they are. 
volunteers of the initiative attest that the contest has reawakened dreams and aspirations. I want to help people in the little knowledge I have. As I start reading, um, honestly, I feel like, like I cannot make it. But at long last, consequently, that the more I go, the more interested it becomes. So therefore, I'm very glad and I never regret coming here to read to you. Reading is good, it helps. Most of the books I have read right now, they, they really impacted a lot to me. So the reading is very good and I believe people learn by emulating. So the more you have knowledge, the more people learn from you. Our entire and rural communities has benefited from the contest. Organizers save donations and crowdfunding from the initiative will be geared towards building libraries where children, youth, and adults can gain value for self development and nation building. Which is Salama Tongi, CB 360, Lagos. Well, um, thank you very much. Huh? Uh, thank you very much, and welcome again to Cultural Scene of Queens of Nigeria Radio, where we bring the diaspora of the scene. If you are wondering what was going on in that video, that, was, that video has been recorded from uh, uh, TV 360, which I, I think is owned by the by the one of uh, our journalists who did fantastically well on on broadcasting. That um, it for. 480 hours reading program started just last weekend uh, at the U Read Library in Yaba. And what is happening is that Buddy Joe, we, we have been uh, Guinness Book of Records uh, winner for the longest um, hours of reading, has decided to go back to this reading program. And he has now outreached himself, or overreached himself, by bringing in young people to join him in this reading project. What they are doing is that they're going to read continuously from now to December 20 for them to be able to compete or to contest for the Guinness World Record uh, longest reading time. Uh, I, I, I couldn't get any of them to speak now because they are supposed to be reading continuously. They are not supposed to stop. So he might not be able to join us, but I, as we go on, I'll be able to talk about it. I wanted us to start with that because a reading nation is a winning nation, as we say. A reading mind is a winning mind. A reading head is a winning head. Just to put it that way, that those who read are leaders. Not all leaders are readers, but those who read will lead well. So what is going on is this idea of encouraging reading culture. And uh, without prompting or anything, uh, why did you come up and Koroduma come up with this idea of competing or contesting in the Guinness Book of Records uh, two years in 2018? And he won. And now he's encouraging a lot more people to join him in this whole idea of reading, protein, but four other young people who are joining it. Hopefully, by next week, I'll be able to go there physically and be able to take it live and bring it to our attention. But they, are, they just started, they're still in the early part. The same, but they're, they're going to be there for 20, okay, December 20. So by next week, they will have been tired, probably worn out. So it will be good to show what committing so many hours of reading can do to you. So I welcome you again to Culture Trade on Spirit of Nigeria Radio. My guest this week is going to be Adelemi. I will say on this program, we like to bring those who are doing stuff, not necessarily those who are just. Uh, hanging in there or just, but those who are there, first thought that is impacting on society. So, and that's why I'm going to bring Adele and Adele. Adi. The one I call Ori Adi to be here, an act, act, activist, cultural advocate, I'll be able to bring him there to, to join us. I'm happy that uh, someone joined us, Kola uh, Adeola and Ruadi Freedom. When you talk about book, those who know about copy editing and editing books, who have committed to books, Kolade is one of them, and I just informed him some few minutes ago, and he's there. Welcome, Kolade. I will be getting to talk to you maybe as we go on. Uh, but this is Cultural Train of Spirit of Nigeria Radio. 
at the Zoom, I'd like to say, is just for our record. The bulk of the listenership is on the internet because it's, a, it's an internet radio, but we broadcast more to the diaspora. And that's where we target. And the whole idea is to let people know that in Nigeria, the thing that is happening here is not just about killing, about bandits or terrorists, that a lot of positive things are going, especially in the area of art. People are doing stuff, people are doing things. And that's why I'm going to be having my guest uh, today with Adelemi Adigite, all the way from the wire, by wire, Bariga, Makoko, Agri, uh, who has launched it there in and the biennial is going on. So I'll be able to bring him uh, to join us uh, here eventually. But let me just do my city uh, round, uh, roundup. So the book reading is going on in, in uh, Yaba, as we speak now. Uh, you know, there was the belly aching that uh, Lagos Island seemed to be the center for cultural production and expression in Lagos. But we've been able to disprove that because a lot more is now happening on the mainland. Because as uh, book reading, as this marathon book reading is going on in Yaba, Iwaya is on fire, as we get to hear from Adele and Adele when we come up eventually. As we're doing that, Jelili Atiku is doing something in Egbeda. You know, jealous to me, you know, should be happy. People are doing stuff in uh, in um, in uh, in Oshodi, and course. so things are happening all around the mainland and then the main and the islands. So everything is working for the good. But I'll be getting to many of those uh, programs. So let me just go on. Uh, a few minutes before we started, uh, the I just I was in the room for the Lagos International Film Festival, Lit, which is curated and produced by my friend. Uh, Mazi Maduchukwendu and his wife, his lovely wife. The festival is going on, and today is the second day. But what gladdened me is the fact that this particular book, the Amorian of Reversal, uh, the story of Nigerian faith, the, from reversal filmmaking to God's bedroom and back, until story of the Nollywood Revolution by Matthew Ulysses Simpa. The book was just unveiled at the, uh, the festival. Uh, the festival is about film screening, about workshop, about storytelling and co. But I'm very happy that this book, that it gave room to this book to have been presented there because we need to always go back to our history. There are so many issues that we mix up and we mess up because we just don't even know our story. But something that has been happening has, has happened today with the presentation of this book. I was privileged to present this same book uh, last week at the uh, I know uh, two weeks ago at the Lagos Book and Arts Festival, so presented alongside reflection, a book by Mr. Femi Akinwe Johnson. These two books, I believe, spoke to each other because they all documented the story of Nigerian film. So that we stop uh, messing up with history. When you mess up with history, you mess up with the sensibility of a generation, of a people, because you are not allowing them to know their story. When people talk about the story of Nigerian film, they like to date Nigerian film back to 1902. I think we had no history before 1902. If you do that, you are committing the same offense that the colonial, I don't like calling them masters, the like colonial guys made when they keep on saying that we have no, no written history. We have no, we have no history until when they came. Those who colonized Africa, they say we have no history until when they came. You are committing the same offense when you try to rewrite or underwrite or miswrite history by saying that Nigeria, the story of Nigerian film started in 1982. It did not. Some of us were as young as we are, we have even been part of the Nigerian film industry, even before 1982, eh, before 1992, and you'd like to date us back. How do you erase all the years that I've spent in his life and just bring me to 1982? So what this book has done is to show the journey. It's a, a part of the journey of the Nigerian film. Because we, Nigerian film started in 1903. As I've been documented, we had story by the show woman that had been done as way back at that time. But every time we like to tell our story, we say it's higher in 1990. What kind of history are you trying to write? Why are you trying to confuse history? Why are you trying to underwrite history? Why are you trying to, 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 to unwrite history that's been written? Please, if you are in the, in the habit of doing that, please stop it. If you don't have the power to stop it, please pick a copy of reverse, from reversal in making to God's bedroom and back until the story of the Nollywood Revolution. Read it. You need to read so that you can enrich your mind. If you cannot get it, 
please get the book by Fenakinze Johnson on Reflections on Nigerian Film. That book also talked about the story of Nigerian film. There's an earlier book that had been done by Shaibu Steni, Dr. Shaibu Steni, also about the story of Nigerian film. Now, the index, is on, uh, index on Nigerian film that were done by uh, the former managing director of Nigerian film uh, corporation, is uh, 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 Now, talk about the story of Nigerian film. So, if you want to understand the story of Nigerian film, please take books and read. Read the story of Nigeria. So you don't sound like some of those illiterates who came up at some point and said that um, there had never been any uh, free quarter, you know, during the end time. One of the saddest comments I had people say was that there had not been any history of a uh, of, uh, street protest or youth protest in Nigeria until when end time happened. How can you underwrite history that way? When even some of your own parents, you only need to ask them. Some of your parents were part of past history, even as recent as June 12, 1993, when people went out. You know how many people were killed on the street? In any case, my guest today, by the time I get to talk to you, you understand how younger people than you have been part of history. I remember I was on the street, and I had to be appealed to, to call him to say that he should leave the street and just save his life. And I did not just, just entering the house. Many of the iconic pictures that we recorded during the oil, um, during the oil, uh, oil, uh, how do you say, the, the President Jonathan uh, Fuel increase. Many of those iconic pictures that we saw on the street were taken by the Remy and David. He's a young man. He's, he was a young man. He's still a young man. But when, from, when people wanted to talk around the end time, they said there was no issue. People had never been on the street. He's the first time young people would go on the street. I think, because you cannot un unwrite it in that way. You cannot have an educated society when you're right. Fortunately, we have young people who have been part of this struggle all, the, all along. Uh, last week, I featured the uh, 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 Damala, Oyin Damala, uh, Uyin Damala, Nibowale. We featured Chef Gwani Bilai. We featured the, um, uh, who have been part of this story in the past, who have been on the street, who have been part of this story of protest here. So please, if you need to get your story right, read books. If you cannot watch them in documentaries, read books. If you cannot read books, watch documentaries. So start, start learning your history and stop writing this. Anyway, I've campaigned enough for this book. Because you cannot get this get Dr. Shaibu in it, but I forgot the title, even though I was part of the editing uh, uh, team. And I also have the book by Mr. Femi Akikili Johnson. I'm quickly trying to fetch it now. There's another book by, uh, by my older brother. Say, this book, Reflection, tells the story of Nigerian film. It's by Femi Akikili Johnson, an anthology of thoughts on Nigerian movie industry, pioneer creativity, and tenacity. A very rich resourceful book. If you combine that book with this book by Matthew Simpa, you understand the Nigerian story. If you now want to get further into it, please read Spirit Alasunes, A Lifetime of Friendship. This a, these are three books that I have in my own small life today that talk about the story of Nigerian history. So that you can stop speaking or talking like a, like a little. If you cannot do that, please listen to people like Mabiki Kwendi, who at least know a bit of the story of Nigerian history. If you cannot get that, please look for Ade Adesanya, Afalabi Adesanya. It's there in Ijebu running the film school. Who knows the story of Nigeria? If you can't get that, please get on some of the platform and understand. Um, uh, you have uh, people like uh, 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 Mahmoud Ali Balogu. You know, you see, have people who know about Nigerian things around. But I'm just saying, if you are so lazy to get to them, read this read them. I'm advertising read them more. And they are very cheap. This one is 2,000. I think this one is about uh, 5,000 or so. This one, I don't even know how much my boy is selling the dome. So I'm sure it's in the region of two to three thousand. It's not up to the money for people. So anyway, I've done my campaign. If you like, go and <laughs> That's German and Nicola for you. I don't know if you're you welcome to this. Uh, allow you to just say, I know you're on the street uh, for the EYA. You, you are a community art lab, art uh, the analysis. 
I'm going to get to you shortly. I still have about six minutes to quickly do my city round. So I'll get you. Anoche, you're welcome. Anoche has already been here with me. Uh, Dario is in the studio. And uh, Rotimi is in the back end. Rotimi, I don't know if you will get angry with you because you are using the old poster. You didn't change your poster. So if you can still change your poster, you can change it. That's for Mr. Rotimi. Because of him, I'm able to make it uh, every that girl he is the technical host. So, culture train of space of Nigeria Radio, where we bring the diaspora up to speak. So, let me just make one more announcement before we go. Uh, this weekend and next weekend, Shadows of the Ancestors, directed by my brother, Mr. Maki Adeno, is running at Global Hall. You know why I'm happy about this particular part? Maki Adeno is one theater director. Writer director that I've always been harassing. I said, look, just don't be chairman of NANTA, uh, National Association of Nigerian Theatre Professionals, Lagos, alone, which makes you look like a, pol a political actor. You are first and foremost a theatre director, and one of the best, one of the very best that we have. Get back to production. And I think um, after joining, uh, after working AWO, out of the story of AWO, by the Duke of Shomolu, by, by, by all means, Duke of Shomolu production is one of the bombs that have happened. After directing our, I think uh, the floodgate has now opened to Martin Dadeo to give us the best of what he has. Because when you talk about uh, the beginning, the, well, the, the resurgence of musical on the Lagos stage, Martin Dadeo had the hand, Saro the musical with uh, Bolanli of Computers and several cultures. Martin Dadeo had the signature there. He was the director of that, of that show. And then before he moved, and he's been doing so many other things. But then he was spending more time doing uh, chairmanship of Lagos, which is very important because somebody needs to be doing all that work for the political artist. But then he has gone back to the level. So, shadows of the ancestors, you don't only need to even read about the review to know how far uh, Martin is going. So I'm going to go and stay next weekend. I'll hopefully I'll be able to talk to him. And then, so I'm so glad that he's gone back to production. I hope after, he has even been to Abuja and did a show. Now he's back to Lagos, and I hope he succeeded in dragging Makinde back to production. We need people like Makinde to continue to produce, to continue to engage our theatrical space. Otherwise, we continue to have some of these shows. There are some shows that are happening that I'm afraid to go and see. Because I train as a theater director, and when I see them breaking the rules, and uh, you know, it's like a medical doctor watching you mess up, or a lawyer watching you mess up the law. Uh, or say, you know, you, you feel very, uh, very sad about that. So that production, I, I try not to go and see. So I don't run my mouth. So I don't become too much of a city. I would rather say, me to corner and just enjoy my life. But anytime people like Chef Grande Sula, like Daryl uh, Yadi, uh, Jodi, uh, Jodi, to and so anytime they come on stage, I just like to be there. So, Makinde, thank you very much for doing service of the answers and for bringing those top actors back on stage. I'm, I'm going to say it next week. Uh, well, still on wrap up, I have a few minutes before Remy will tell me that I should now call it. I feel my word. I'm <laughs> I mean, you know, you know that I know you, that you're a couple of just like you. So let me just quickly. Yeah, my dad is that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't teach you all out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to you shortly. See my word. I'm a, uh, African Media Academy just ended. And I was happy when uh, 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 Madam Peace, Aya Mosebe, appeared on TV today. I spoke to why she was doing what she was doing. She said something very remarkable. That she decided to hand over Ama to other people to run so that she could move into mentoring young people to set up a process that will help to groom young people to do things. And she, she gave us an elaborate plan. Uh, if you want to see that interview, very good interview conducted by Steve Ayoni, you can go on the uh, Arise TV uh, website. I think you see that interview was really very inspiring. This one when I, when I saw it. Well, so, I'm a, I'm a just, uh, yes. um, talking about art festival, yes, and, and festival. I wish I could get Jerry Addition to be here today. Art festival is about children, uh, uh, children theater festival. 
and uh, I'm supposed to be part of that, but I don't really have all the information. My, but I know that they will be opening uh, pretty soon. Uh, maybe by the time I get, I know you will remind me of uh, what what the project is about. But it's next to so I'm going to get the additional and share that it's not part of the conversation next week. Uh, so so many things are still happening. Just as we thought that oh, the cultural season is is, is separating off. A lot more things are happening in Abuja, in Enugu, in everywhere. And I'm always happy when things are happy. But the biggest news for me this time around, uh, not here, and you are welcome, so you have to be, because I'm grilling, I don't know me, I did because it's like we're doing incest. I don't know me is part of me, I'm part of I don't know me, I did So you will help me to be the one to grill, I think you say, on this dream, it's planned. Uh, if you can uh, unmute yourself, I'm not here, and I don't know, please unmute yourself and show your your camera because we're about to start the full blast program now. I, I don't even want to take any musical break because that may derail me again. But then we have to be in and out because it's also directing the first one that is doing. But I've asked him to to to, to start his uh, video. He's on the street. Don't mind if there, there is noise in the background. Huh. Oh, yeah, they... Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know that your attention is every... Are you in the car? Hello? Are you in the car? Are, are you on the road? Hello, Yade. Hello. Hello, Yade. Hello. Hello. I can see you and I can hear you. Do you hear me? Hello. Hello. Hello, Yade. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Oh, okay. Are you on the road? No, I can see you are in the car. Yes, I've, I've packed. <laughs> oh, okay. Look, okay, let me tell from you. How much will this disturb your direction on the set? Because the first part is going. Will this disturb you? So that we know how to well, manage that. Don't worry, sir. <laughs> I'll manage that. Oh, I have some other oh, oh, uh, oh, working with oh, me. Oh, okay. So, so let me let me fire the first shot. Yes. You are a community at Vienna. What does it mean? Before I go to your other thing. I don't say he's there. I don't say you know. I, I don't say he's there to also be. I don't want to be the one to be. Because as I said, you are part of me and part, and I don't want us to be or nepotism or cronyism. So I will need another to do what I'm doing. So, okay. Ika, you are your community at Biennale. What does it mean? Or Biennale? What does it mean? Biennale. Yeah. Well, um, I. Was um, I grew up in Iwaya actually? I was given birth in Iwaya and I grew up in Iwaya and I was able to um, achieve whatever I have achieved in my artistic career, you know, by uh, being a product of that community. And at some point, I think that I have to give back to the community. Well, I have my trajectory, you know, being the producer of uh, Poetry Potter and also uh, working with you, learning a lot of tricks, you know, on how to produce uh, uh, with you. At some point, I said to myself that I wasn't going to produce anything anymore because I went into visual arts. And I said I wasn't going, going to produce anymore because I know what it, what it takes, you know, uh, the, the trouble of getting funding to run your, to actually um, actualize your dreams and all of that. So, but after some years, um, I think uh, I, I just said to myself that I have to start again. I have to start again and do something for my community. If I was, you know, if I came from that kind of background and I was able to act, act, attain this height, I think some other people in the community, if they are given opportunity, they can actually get to that point as well. So that was what gave birth to that idea of um, vernacular art space laboratory where we train young people within the community um, through arts. You know, we have no other 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 means to to train them uh, with than than art. You know, performance art, visual art, photography. You know, all kinds of um, genre on the visual arts, basically. And then uh, we started this festival, Waya Community Art Festival, because we said to ourselves that all of this that we produce in our um, studio space, you know, how do we get them to the people? You know, how do we give it 
people the opportunity, people that are living within the community, the opportunity to see what we are doing because they will never go to a gallery space or to a museum to see any show. They don't. They cannot even afford it. Talk less of actually going there to see our show. You know, so we decided to actually um, collapse the boundary between the people living in this kind of marginalized community and then um, bring art closer to them. So they can actually um, see art, you know, while doing their daily life um, activities without any interruption, you know, an artist coming to them and they, they enjoy it and then they move on with their lives and all of that. And it doesn't cost them anything. So that was uh, what gave birth to the wire community at uh, Vienna. It started as a festival in 2016, and we had the first edition in 2016, 2017, and 2018. So um, we had a break in 2019 and um, 2020, of course, obviously, because of co uh, um, coronavirus. And then uh, now we, are, we, we want to continue it as a Vienna. Because running it every year, I think it's um, logistically not realistic anymore. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that boost of uh, information, Adore. You you answer so many questions together. It, it also shows another aspect of you. People will not know. Adore and Adore, which is also a reporter, it's a switch reporter, and I, I can attest to that because we did a lot of uh, quite a lot of stuff together. We've been listening to our uh, another welcome. We've been listening thank to all this Adore and Adore, which is Aka Ori Adore on Culture Train of Spirit of Nigeria Radio. And as I've been saying, if you do not mind that we are only five people in the Zoom room, there is not the, the bulk of this ship to Culture Train are in the cloud, because this is an internet radio, broadcasting to the diaspora. But we do this for recording, so that you two can have a record of it. Uh, I don't let me add it So you are very much welcome to Culture Train. Of course, you know, if you are not doing what you are doing now, you will have been part of this particular program, because yes. it's worked together over a long time ago, and I'll be digging back into your, into your history. But let me just throw a joke so that people, people know. You know, I almost, uh, I, I don't care how you listen. I used to tell, I don't, like yes. I said, I don't know where you get his energy from, because it's always so hypertensive, right? But even when we do programs together, I say, let me, am I not the one directing this show? Why are you doing more than me? Because of all this energy. Then when he told me last year that, uh, Eventually, he got married and he had a baby. I said, at least there's something to tame you. So remove, so detune. <laughs> but he had not surprised me. He launched this. And before he did this, he went to Germany to launch a tutorial. <laughs> so it means that the baby at night is not taking enough energy. I think we should ask the madam to give him a set of things. So that you'll be like, are you are a who has sickness all of the sudden, and then <laughs> you're all right. Why are you not talking about it? They're still giving that, you know? And I thought that you'd be tired. You'd be... Okay, but uh, I mean, that's our personal joke. <laughs> and then, I mean, before I bring it yes, up, Tutorla is cool. Yes, sir. What's that about? Because you just launched that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, well, maybe I should quickly say I something. I don't want to give context to all the things that you are doing together. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, I, I, I just wanted to say before I talk about it to all that all the all this energy that you are talking about, I got it from you. <laughs> you, know, uh, you train us to be like that. I've seen you yeah. in the newsroom, I've seen you on the feed being a producer of. Uh, uh, art productions and you know <laughs> Remy, why is this like this? Why is that like that? So it is my clue. Not to be me. like that. <laughs> Not I. Thank, it is my clue. Thanks so much, sir. <laughs> thanks so much, sir. Thanks so much. Sir. We learned so much from um from you, sir. Thanks so much, sir. So um um Tutuola Institute is actually a project, it's an intervention on a particular project that is tagged white money. Two years ago, I was invited by, by um, a theater company based in Berlin. It's called Flimworks. Um, and they asked me if I would like to be part of a project called White Money. And the idea was actually to probe um, the complexity and the power play in the European art funding scheme. I will explain a little bit. The idea is that, you know, whenever you get funded by 
maybe now I should name is uh, I, I should name names uh, like we used to say. You know, <laughs> you get funded by Gauthier Institute, the usual European um, funding bodies: Gauthier Institute, Alliance France, British Council, Prince Klaus Fund. You know, there is always that hierarchy. You know, when they are giving fund to you, there is always hierarchy. There is always that complexity around it. You know how you have to use the money, what you have to use the money for, and it's only it's, it's not only about uh, when they are dealing with people from the global south. They also do it with people from the global north as well. You know, even people from their own countries as well. So we were asked to probe these this structure, and uh, we had us last year. You know. Um, Towards the end of last year, we had uh, a glimpse of hope that we were going to get a, um, a funding for the project because we've been trying for the past two years. And um, by January, you know, the uh, project was chosen and then we had to um, do this project actually. And um, for like three months or, or four, we, we started this lab. We talked about a lot of things, you know, all the artists, seas of force from the global south, um, one from Iran, one from Egypt, two from in, uh, India, one from Tanzania, and I am from um, my, myself from um, um, Nigeria. You know, all of us were invited and we started talking about ideas and all of that. Some of us have not been funded before by some of these institutions, but I have, you know, received funding for various projects from Prince Klaus, from Gothe Institute, from British Council, you know, so I know what this hierarchy is. I know what this complexity is. I've even had issues with one of those uh, funding bodies, you know, that, you know, it was really a serious issue between both of us. So um, my response was actually to Tuola Institutes, that instead of us always waiting for these um, Global North um, funding organizations to bring funds to us as artists and cultural producers in the Global South, why not create some, some kind of alternative funding um, scheme that can also you know, begin to put us on the map and have that global um, um, cultural um, um, global diplomacy, diplomacy um, conversations instead of you know, this one-sided conversation that is always coming from Europe. You know, we are the one point funding them. You know, every artist wants to write to uh, Leon Spence. Go to institute, British Council, you know, Prince Klaus, if there are other ones. I know, you know, other ones that are working in the um, um, in the eastern part of Africa as well. So why are we always waiting for them? Why can't we also create something like, I mean, having to Tuola Institute in Berlin and funding local German artists? So this was what gave birth to the idea of Tutuola Institute. And I went ahead with Um, almost as go ahead, go ahead, sir. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, we have ahead. almost the same status as um, British Council or Gothe Institute. The only thing is that we were not funded, Tutor Alliance was not funded by the government of Nigeria. Okay. So, so but, but, but why, why Tutuola? And then in that same breath, link to Tuola to ICAP before Anote comes in. Yeah. So okay, why you well, yeah. well um, I think to Tuola, um, well, I, I was actually interested in what Amos Tuola was doing because I see a lot of myself in Tuola, you know, as a person with his style of writing. Hello. Uh, next talk is a challenge. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, okay. Go ahead. Back. Better now. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we hear you now. It's a problem, yeah. But so, ahead. so yeah. Um, someone, you know, I I was really interested in his personal story, you know, as the writer, and how he was able to make it to the mm -hmm. level of his work being discussed at international front. And uh, yeah, and I see I see myself a lot in his in his in his person. I see myself, you know, that's that's where I've learned, you know, how to do a lot of things, you know. <laughs> so uh, it was interesting for me to actually uh, pick him as as um, 
the, the, uh, use his name as, as the name that I would like to use for the Institute. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be back with more, more questions. Let me leave it to the journalist now. <laughs> okay. Who can bring you better? Because me, me and Peter check it because I know you. <laughs> so <I'm not> sure. <laughs> Yeah, let me well done. Um. Thank you very much, sir. It's been a long time. <laughs> Quite a long time, you know. Yes. And I remember I remember you in the newsroom back then. I said, ah, this man has gone global. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really very, really very interesting what you are doing, you know. Um, for a young man like you to, I mean, you, almost like Onye uh, Kaunwelwe. You know, what is doing for Nigerian arts? I mean, we need more young people like you coming up to actually push the frontiers. Yeah. You know, and I, I like this idea of uh, the Mostotola Institute. You know, I was, I was being interviewed by <clears throat> a, a Nigerian young man who's doing MA in the UK, you know, about how the, the African diaspora can actually benefit and or be part of Nigerian tourism business. You know, and I said, look, we have things like uh, the Good Institute, the British Council, uh, Dance France. Why cannot Nigeria have an institute like that in these foreign countries, pushing Nigerian story, Nigerian cultural diplomacy? You know, thank you. These are people want to come to Nigeria, but they don't have an anchor. They don't know. They don't just know how to go about it. All right. Now they are even from what they call the state of the African diaspora, and they want to come here to do business. But we don't seem to be ready, which is a challenge, you know. But so my other question to you now is, great to have formed this institute, but what about funding? How do you fund it? How, for instance, a young man comes to you with an idea, you know, with a proposition. I want to do uh, what you are doing, like a, you are a BNR in Mushin or uh, in Kaduna or in Port Harcourt, and they approach you. How will you raise the money to be able to sponsor such productions? Yeah. Or such yeah. Projects? Thank you very much, sir. So um, um, this was actually a question that was um, asked a lot of time uh, well, during well, the opening. Well, I let me, so that you know what I'm saying, let me welcome your teacher. So that you know what I'm saying, Professor Kali Adi Odisola is there. So wow. you, say like this, you know, it's only the case. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Actually, um, this was a question, uh, like I said, this was a question that was asked a lot of times, you know, when I was, uh, when I was in Berlin during the um, launching of Tutuala Institute. Well, um, as it is now, is a visual arts um, project and as well as a standard um, institute. Well, for now, you know, we don't know where to go with the funding. I intend to start um, talking to people because I actually would love to raise the funds for these projects in Nigeria and not getting money from all of these European uh, institutions to fund an African um, institute that would then function in their own country. I, I don't think it makes sense. But then, as it is now, I have to, now that the funding for that project has ended, I have to then go back to the drawing board and see how to start raising funds and see what to do in terms of projects and all of that. We, were, we are not going to start really big, but then um, I think by the first quarter of next year, we'll start doing series of lectures, um, programming, and, and yeah other projects. Even if we can fund the project with 50,000 naira, we would do it. Even if it is 20,000 naira, we would do it. We just want to make sure, we want, we want to make it known, you know, to the global north that something can be done here as well without their, you know, without them funding it. We can make things happen here. We actually right. have an home office in my community in Iwaya. Okay. So All we right. did not just have the, we did not just register the organization. We have an home office. It's a very small space. We intend to take it to the next level, have a bigger space, have a library. You know, we have a lot of books. We have a lot of vinyls. You know, we want to take it to the next level. We have a lot of old, old Yoruba music from the 70s and from the 60s, actually, till late 90s, you know. 
and all of these things we would like you know for people to have access to to to, to all of these things yeah so we need a bigger space as you know uh, both digital yeah. and and analog uh, library space yeah. okay now um you, you mentioned that uh, the the focus will be on visual arts of uh, the, that's the, the Amos Trola Institute. But Amos, I mean, Trotola was a writer. So, I mean, how, how do that uh, play out? Well, um, just like um, Gote was also a philosopher and a writer, you know, and Gote Institute is dealing with all kinds of cultural production. I mean, the, the, the sentiment there basically is that Gote Institute is not here to promote our art. They are here to promote their language yeah. and their culture. The first time that I was ever given an opportunity to travel abroad, it was uh, my daddy here, Mr. German. I don't know if I'm able to even call his name. You know, they gave me that opportunity and it was called visiting program. It's just for me to go to Germany for a week and experience German culture. And that was, you know, what the program was all about. I left Lagos to go to Germany to learn about German culture, art, system, language, and all of that so, to understand how it works. So we can also, you know, do something like that here. And I didn't say that it was going to be only visual arts, you know, like I said, you know, oh. it's going to be as, as it is right now is a visual art project, but then it can, it, it also have the other side of it, which is like uh, an institute because it has been registered. It's not just an idea. It has been registered. We have certificates. We, we have all of that for all the paperwork have been done. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, that's well, quite commendable. Well done. Thank you very much. Well, um, the, the, I don't know if you permit me, what I would like to keep in, uh, because I also like uh, Professor Adi to, to keep in before we now go to ITA. Um, The connection between vernacular art laboratory, VAL, yes. Tutuola Institute, and now ICAB. That's one strand of the of the question. The second strand, really, I don't know what I should bring to the second one. You you said, and I was a bit afraid when you said um, that you were doing production. Then you said that okay, it's not just about production, or that you want to stop production and just start doing uh curious visual, visual, visual arts or managing. I mean, how, how do you reconcile? Are you you do you mean that I won't see your pictures anymore, or I won't see? Your creative work anymore. So I know you also <laughs> installation art and uh, yeah, you know yeah. what does what does it mean? Uh, because when there's next fires on the street, I'll seek for you to go and cover it. Don't you know that? I have no choice, sir. <laughs> I'll be right there, sir. <laughs> okay, sir. Um, yeah. talking about um vernacular, um tutuola and and eye cap. Actually, you know, vernacular um, tutuola was all about, you know, we talk about the colonize, uh, the colonization all the time. But I, I have read a lot of papers. I've read a lot of things about the colonization. But then the, the problem that I have is that there's not a lot of practicality. There's not a lot of things that we are doing to change that narrative. We just talk about it. We have a lot of people talking about restitutions right now and all of that, and they are doing the paperwork. But how many people in the country know about what they are doing? Now, in Nigeria, we got some works back, you know, uh, about two months ago or some weeks ago. But it's only about, it was only about Benin bronzes. Come on, this is Nigeria. They looted in, in, the, in the Southwest, in the Southeast, in the South South. They looted in every corner of the country. So um, um, it's a lot of it's a lot of things that we 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 need to, we really need to talk about you know we really need to when when it comes to decolonization and and you know repatriation and all of that you know that is what the focus of Tutuola is you know promoting Yoruba and and I'm sorry you know I'm I can't do a Nigerian project it's not possible I don't speak Hausa I don't speak Igbo and I know that Hausa Igbo and Yoruba is not the they are not the only languages that we speak in Nigeria we have about you know 200 or 250 languages if not more so that was the reason why I said let me stick to this Yoruba thing and see what you know I can achieve with it 
But that is coming from vernacular aspects laboratory. The idea that what gave birth to vernacular aspects laboratory. When we were in um, primary school, even right from the kindergarten, um, we were told not to speak our language. Like, you know, you know, it, it's it's forbidden. You can't speak Yoruba or Igbo or Hausa in the in, you know in the classroom. In fact, you'll be beaten, you know, sometimes they even collect money from us or you know, all kinds of punishment comes with, you know, and we you have your mind, you know, being abused for several years, like 18 years of your life. Someone is telling you that your culture is not is not good enough, your language is not sophisticated enough, so you, you don't have to speak it in the classroom and all of that. So um, that was that was what actually gave birth to that vernacular aspects laboratory. That you know we are going to stay here, create works that reflect our community, our society, our culture as well, and that's what we have been doing for years. Tutuola is just another step to what we have been doing at the Vernacular Aspects Laboratory, which is a, you know, a personal project. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get the funding, like Mr. Anute said, but then it's going to go on. The project will go on, you know. Uh... Mm. Oh, uh, frozen again. Is it, is it from your yes. end or? Just... Okay, yeah, well, go ahead. It was frozen. Yeah. So it, it, it brings us closer to the people in the community, you know, so that they know what we do in in, those, in in our lab, you know, those things that we create, those ideas that we create and all of that. We have to bring it out and let people see it. We also want to uh, take our ideas to commercial galleries and museums, but then it's also good for people that we make, that, that people that inspire us to create all of these things to also see uh, what we produce okay. as well. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know Anote is uh, running to ask another question, but you know, uh, Professor Ade with the Collagen Journal. I want to, just for the purpose of this question, now, you are a community at Biennial. Is it Biennial or Biennial? Which of them? Is Biennial? Biennial. Hello? Yeah, I'm Hello? here, sir. I mean, it's yeah. actually biennial. Biennial, which is every. It's biennial. Yes, it, it started as a festival. It started as a festival, but this okay. is the debut edition of the biennial. So okay, so so why did you migrate the? I, I know you were doing the 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 festival was being done by Vernacular at Laboration, right? Yes, yes. And then you yes, now sir. migrated it to biennial. Yes, sir. Now let me ask. Uh, let me ask a, a social question. I know that when you started the vernacular, you had a huge problem with the community, with the elder. You yes, even yes, asked me yeah. to come and make intervention at some part. I don't yes. that. You <laughs> said, look, you, you go and fight this part. But I don't want to start that environment. <laughs> so if they were fighting you over the vernacular and you were doing the festival, which was to the advantage of the student, now you migrated to Bahia. And the people yes. I saw were all these young people riding bicycles and disturbing the public peace. Are you sure you are going to survive in that community? You can speak generally, broadly, about that so that stuff can come in. And, uh, and are you sure you are not going to go into problem with the community? Well, um, there is, uh, you know, people people always criticize what they don't really understand. Um, when we started, it was a new thing for them. You know, we are in our comfort comfort uh, zones, uh, yeah. smoking our India M, you know, peacefully and drinking our um, beer and alcohol and monkey tail peacefully and someone came and said that he's going to take all our boys away from us and and, and turn them to artists. This was a big uh, problem and this was a, a big mistake also that I made, you know, because we were all out that we are going to change the mind of these guys, uh, you know, from all of this that they're doing. But then um, gradually after about after five years in the community, they are, they are, they are, they are getting to understand what we do. And uh, even with the festival, the festival actually helped them to, to, to have an understanding of what we do better. In the past um, two years, in 2019, the festival had been old, and 2020, the, the uh, people in the community started asking, where are those white people? You are not inviting them. Because even though it's a community-based um, um, festival, it was an international project. So we usually invite at least five international artists for every edition. 
for it's it's only this edition that we did not invite um, um, any international artists. And the, the reason was that COVID came and we have to be careful, you know. So uh, we had sent them letters of invitation and later we had to record those letters and say that, look, um, let's postpone that to 2023, you know. So, uh, sir, that is it. It's because they did not understand what we were doing at the beginning. Now they are becoming to, to get it better, even though they still, they still come with their tantrum, but then we are dealing with them in the, in the right way, sir. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, uh, it, it's growing on them. That's what. Yes, so, it's growing on them. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I could see the entire community. I mean, the, the video I saw, a lot of people are now on the street, and even those yes. the man who is selling yam, the one with yes, selling, they, they were so the happy, play, sir. The beer yeah. parlor, I saw a doubt of performing on the street. You know. Yes. So, yes, so, yes, let, yes. Let me bring in. Uh, let me bring in Prof now to to interject, and then I know that we're going back. I'm not, oh, I'm not saying, hello, Prof. Um, um, I saw the, I saw the title, you know, Arts for Mobilization. Um, I have little idea about um, some of what you're talking about, but I know that every, every community, arts and cultural, um, concept that has taken off in Nigeria has always run into trouble with the community. <laughs> um, I'm talking about Jalili. Jalili also yes. had a problem with the community because some of these ideas do not look like the elders in the place have a buy-in and um, a grounded understanding of what is done. I would always think about um, Ayota. Um, when Ayota started in Ajegule, the dad who owned the property was totally unsure of what was happening. But I think with perseverance, most of those who have come before um, Mr. Adebite, have also held on to their vision. And soon after, people come around to appreciate what has been done. You did mention um, Adefila. I'm sure when Adefila started with Sonia Ade's children, <laughs> nobody had an idea of what he was about to turn that place into and the beauty about about what is happening in lagos is that festivals are becoming community oriented mm -hmm. just last week just last week after maybe five or six years the the white woman who's been organizing the Falamore arts and cultural festival held another Funny. one of it last Saturday, I think. And she's been holding it in such a way that there is hardly any fun fair, not too much noise in the media either. Mm. But what, what I have been seeing is that nearly mm. every community in in Nigeria, including the, I think there used to be a Badagri Arts Festival. I think there was one that was promoted by Professor Wojtyla. So there, there is, number one, there is a need now, more than ever before, for a cultural map and a cultural festival map in Lagos, where all these things are coming up. And they come from not the city center. They're coming from the grassroots. They're coming from uh, Iwaya, they're coming from um, um, Bariga. Bariga. They're coming from. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, they and and this all these things are, are growing, and like everything that is Nigerian, my expectation is that they will first have to prove themselves. They will hmm. first have to grow. They first have to 
document what they have done before anybody, even Nigerians, pay them any attention. So that is the nature of cultural development in Nigeria. And I would say, I will tell you the reason why. When you are people that are surrounded by performances, it is very difficult to actually see when a, a performance becomes something that is either in a house or in a circle. Because you would see when I was growing up, Arabia too, Rabia to Nibberi will take off from Bola Street. He will walk all the way to Babbage and people will follow. The same thing with the Ololu, the Ebulu, right there. He will just dance and the, the groves were not places in which what we're having now, the modern form where people now congregate and they're there. Or even if you look at the Adamo Risha Festival, the, the crowd or the group of the participants will just meet overnight. But has anybody ever asked, all of those incantations and the chants, how do they learn them? How do they pass them from one generation to the other? They don't, they, they never had, uh, I've never heard that they had um, an AO, a your training institute where all of them will gather. But when it comes to that performance, you would see them all over the place, the songs and all of that. I'm still amazed up to today. Number one, I would like to know how the Ayo, you know, Adamo Risha, Ayo uh, Eleko, and this one, and that one, and, and there are so many, they choose their colors, they choose their design. And there is a subtle competition amongst them all. We've never had a center that holds all of this. So I can understand why um, in this transition from centralized cultural planning, from the decentralized, I can understand why there will be altercations and misunderstandings, mm. and then there will be need for funding and all of that. Who funds the AYO? Mm. How is the AYO founded? The Egugu that we see, who are the babasales that send them money? And these things have not died. The Agere that we see, who are the funders? Where do, how do they get funded? Mm. And how come they have, they have, um, out, outlast and the, the, how come they outlast even those who are the leaders? The Gelede, I, I, and I, as I'm speaking, I am also asking myself, the, there are lots of things to understand in how our culture has been packaged, propagated, and the participation of a generality of a people. So when you, when, when proscenium theater intervened, if anybody who has read a book Clark and read how Ogunde or the altercation between Adedeji and Adeluba about Agbegijo and Alari Jo theater. No, these are all, these are all cultural elements that we need to understand and see what is being the sustaining power in them? What sustained them? Why, how come they, they have lived for so long and there seem not to be any fear of any one of them dying? The ones that I have a fear of, that I have a, a great fear of are the, the plastic arts, the visual arts that have now gone commercial and actually need people to buy their works in order for them to be sustainable. Mm. Um, it yeah. is also a fact that um, those who have to make plays in proscenium theaters are the ones that have a problem, really, 
because they have to pay actors and all of that. So what, what I'm saying is that if we go back to our cultural antecedents, we should ask ourselves how they, how they sustain it to the point that till today, these things are still there. But mm. when we <laughs> into the modern era where we need spaces, where we need funding, these are really problematic. Oh. Very okay. problematic. If anybody has, um, has ever read, um, if anybody has ever read Karen Baba, how Karen Baba talks about audiences that at the initial stage that a lot of West Africans found it difficult to pay one cobble to go and watch a show. Because if you get into the Molwe, I mean, in my days, I don't know what happens these days, but in my <laughs> days, when you get into a Molwe, you are sure of an entertainment. The guy selling, selling oh. something. <laughs> so the performance. <laughs> there was always a performance. Though it was never the movie, yeah. it was improvisation, and we never paid for any of those. Yeah. And then um, um, we even had chicken fights, like they have in Indonesia, <laughs> in Bali. Yeah. There will be chicken fights, and there will be a crowd. We never paid for any of these things. And then we're doing the Ilea. We had the the ram. Ram. There were ways in which we were entertained. The only problem, and up till today, Nigeria still has a problem with um, um, breeding an audience. The last time I spoke at Danta, and nobody has followed it up, is that we need, just like you have customer relations officers, we need audience relations officers. Hmm that need to cultivate, uh, our people are not used to paying for shows. <laughs> it is true. only the that middle is, class. Is <laughs> it is only the middle <laughs> class and the upper class that mm -hmm. can go to an Alibaba show with 200,000 Naira. Of course. When we did it, um, though a lot of you will not agree with me, in the days of Ikorodu, when there used to be parties, they will hold the party from Saturday to Sunday morning. When you are leaving, they will serve you breakfast. Oh. Yes. And they will give you um, a wooden as part of takeaway. You know, in a Korodu. <laughs> if you ever remember what we called Owodia, when General Dia was the governor of Ogu State, and he started to task, uh, tax parties. If you hold any street party like this, you will pay. And they call it over dia. I mean, it might sound very funny, but please just bear with me. Look back. Let's look. Somebody says, maybe the way ahead is by looking back. Yes. Let us look back and understand what is there. And maybe there might be one or two things we can get. But I tell you for one, the real issue in cultural packaging production has to do with funding of a people that find it difficult to part with money to pay for something that surrounds them. To those of us who yeah. have published one or two books, even the richest of my friends will say, Kole, when are you going to send me a copy of your collection of poetry? I hope you are not talking about me. <laughs> I I don't I don't have the balls to mention anybody's name. <laughs> Review copy, sir. Review copy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you don't make anything, <laughs> and then I give out the copies. Then I can't I can't produce the next one. And they don't even ask me when are we are seeing your next publication. But understand the context in which they are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Mm.
when I was growing up, Jeba, there used to be um, a petrol station in Jeba. Big petrol station with Danfo and all of them. Any new release, any new release, they will first play there. We always stand there and listen terribly and bad only to the music. <laughs> and then the analysis will start. I don't know whether they do it anymore. But that's how we grow. <laughs> Eh? Mm -hmm. They're they still up. doing it. Yes, that's yeah. how we grew up. <coughs> and they release a new idea in the barista. Yes, that's, that's, how how that's why I want to. I, I want to relate it to. No, prof, don't go away, please. You know what you are what you are saying now. And I was wondering. I was wondering what what may be going on in the uh, in the mind of uh, Adirem. Mm. Now you you yeah. you produce for the community. Because he was, he was saying that I don't mm. even want to take money from international because of the yeah. cultural price. He doesn't want to take money from the community, from I mean, from from foreign agencies and so. But then you are producing something of value for the community. The way from the way you are saying is that when when that was going, the community itself comes to appreciate it. But now the community that we have bred now. Prefer to spend that money on pepper soup and beer instead of allowing him to even do the show, even with their own family. Uh, I'm looking at the chromatic of it. There are people in the community, the woman who I saw in the video that I really shared on the Instagram, who put a, I don't know what she was selling, but people were patronizing now, even while she was dead. People were mm. going to buy, people were buying yeah, people were buying stuff in the place. So, how do you relate that to the economic? Or economic of, of, of the festival. Thank you. That's very what much. I wanted to say. Welcome, Mr. I know who that's very much. Welcome. See, um, yeah. I, I attended a webinar. We were talking about participation yes. and cooptation. Participation or cooptation. When people, when, when a group, and really, participation is very political. You do not expect the community to 100% of them to have a buy-in. But if the production is a reflection of that community at the initial, I tell, I, um, for one whole semester, I kept on repeating to students in my African literature and culture class, a paraphrase of Oshofison, take your dream to the end of a street and take the street to the end of your dream. End of your it's dream. A paraphrase. And what it means is that your vision should not be outside of the community in which you want to mobilize. Mm. When you, you, you have a dream, it says take your dream to the end of the street, meaning that to the last man. Well, theoretically, it's not possible. But what it's saying is that if you want to make a change, there, there are ways in which you can intersect with the community. Before they begin to see these things, you prepare them for it. You ask for their input. Look, the master community mobilizer and developer in the whole of the world and in heaven, his name is a guy called Shipiwe. He's in South Africa. He lives in Guguletu. If there's anybody who can rival Shipiwe, I would want to see that person. Let me tell you what Shipiwe does. He's in Guguletu. Outside of, of Cape Town, there are area boys in every society in Nigeria. When Shipiwe wants to have the community festival, arts festival in Guguletu, Shipiwe will hold meetings with the area boys and area fathers. He and he calls them security, security. Um, subcommittee. They have a buy-in. 
they are the ones who take charge of every car and every tire that comes into Guguletu. Come, Shipiwe will tell you. They watch over that thing as if it's their life. Their, their names are written in the program as members of a committee. <laughs> he, 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 I can send you his name, his contact. We should, I mean, we should bring Google, wow. we should bring Shipiwe to this thing. Let me tell you, before the festival, I think three months before the festival or so, the artists that have painted works will now be meeting owners of houses. I went with him. They will carry their artwork. They will go and talk to the owners of the houses. Are you with me? And because they are going to hang the artwork there for three months. They have a rapport with the owners of the houses. That is the gallery. And each house has a gallery. The only understanding is that on the day of a festival, the weekend of a festival, you would open your house and people will walk through and see the work in situ, how that work fits. In your house. In, exactly. And then they will have performances. Those girls that like to judy in South Africa, they will come and they will do the dance. And people will come from Cape Town, tourists and stuff. And they, they usually pay. And they will look around the houses. They would interact with the people. Your cars will be safe. He, he didn't build any center. Maybe oh. he did, but I don't know. But he didn't show me any place. Shipiwe, man, I, for all, I, all, in all my life, when I tell him these things, he just looks at me like, what is wrong with you now? Stop all this. I'm just an ordinary man. You know, like, like, like telling to him, oh, you are writing so well. He will just say to you, what is wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with this one? We are, we, are, we are trying to make something. We are singing. I met Shipiwe, I think, in 2013. I have never forgotten that experience. It was a mind-blowing experience. And don't get wow. me wrong, Bo, though I have said it and it looks as if it's rosy rosy. Of course, he has problems now. But the concept, yeah. I have tried to sell it in, in Florida here. That let art show itself as an integral part of the life of a people, as opposed yeah. to being outside of it. Mm. Okay. Okay, so thank this, you very much. This, well. this, 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 yeah. wow. this, this, this is a tutorial, really. I, I don't really mean, um, yes, sir. In fact, how, do you relate to, how do you relate to what Prof has said before I'm not saying we were coming? You know, you know, I find it fascinating that when you start the festival, yes, the sir. area boys and the area fathers, but the, the one you reported to me were the chief who yes. thought that you took community land to build the, the laboratory. Now, but look at the way she has put it. We don't know what she's doing when she mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. that is actually, he now made the community, the area boys the community. I don't want to call the area boys. He now made the <laughs> What was your strategy for, for getting the community to buy in, apart from the white yeah. people that were coming in? <laughs> Well, um, I've, I've learned so much from Prof today, and um, I'm happy that, um, yeah, um, I my my beginning with the with the community was also like that. You know, I have to negotiate every space every time that I have to put anything in the community. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this particular edition. I think that for me, I like uh, the style that I employed uh, during this particular edition because I got I got some of those area boys to actually be the one installing the photographs. Those photographs that you see on the walls, you might see me knocking something on the wall. That's a lie. I think it was just for the filming of the of of of, of that particular um, 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 side. It wasn't me that did it. It was all of these guys. I employed them. I gave them um, drinks and, and, and food. 
and they were happy and they installed, you know, in every part of the community. And um, yeah, it's a lot. If you have to work in the community, it's a lot. You have to write a lot of letters. You have to sit with a lot of people because for each street, there is a lot, you know, and you have to <laughs> really be in the good book of this lord in, a, in that particular street, you know. And this, it, it doesn't really have to be an area boy. At times, it's, it's, it's one politician that that just doesn't doesn't like you. You also have to, in a way, massage the ego of this person, and so that you can have your way in the community. But it's so funny that at when I started, I just decided to engage the community without telling anybody. That was in 2016. We just went to every corner of Iwaya community and put ads, and then get performing, perform, uh, performing artists to perform in every corner of the community. And the area boys came, they asked me for money. Those that I can give something, I give them. Those that I cannot afford, I, to, I told them, um, I have nothing. And really, if you're talking about giving something, it, it's nothing, it's just for drink. I, I can't give them anything, like the politicians. Because I'm an artist and I'm doing art, I'm giving them art for free, you know. And... Um, yeah, that was how we started. But this year has been really, really interesting how we worked with the with the area boys. We just because I just came to that realization that I should get them to really understand what I do so that they don't usually come, they don't come to me for money. If they really understand what it is and they, they are part of it, they will stop this idea of wanting to get money, even though they try anyway, they try always and every time. You know, even when I'm not running anything on this. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to ask a follow-up so that you, so that you take it on board. You know, when when Prof was talking about the the is it Google you have you have posted the Wateng Growth and Development Agency, uh, city of Wateng. People call it Gauteng, Gauteng. Um, you know, the, those kind of communities, Google to community are cool because I've worked there before, even in uh, Cape Town. They are more homogeneous. In terms that most of them are from the same tribe, and, you know, you know they, they ship themselves from one place. What I have observed about Nigeria, and, and this is a fundamental problem uh, issue about Nigeria's own what we call ghetto, or uh, to use the word advanced slum, is that a uh, ghetto, for instance, which you are forced under, if you don't mind, Adele, is that they, they it is, it is, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> So they come from different communities. So you have people who are from the uh, Benin Republic, you have Togolese, you have people from the Ijo, Delta, Yoruba, Igbo, and so on. And everybody comes and have their own unit. I don't know if you understand what that is. They yes, have their yes, own sir, I do. Or communal unit. Yeah, because unit. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you were part of when Ben Kulogi tried to shoot. Uh, a documentary for Chevron. And after giving money to you, they say, no, you don't give money to the job. These so called people, <laughs> like, uh, I'm not kidding. <laughs> so at some point, you don't even know. I know you are very, you are, is also this community of different people. Yeah. So different people, and then do you have a way of of bringing all of them together, or how do you navigate that kind of land? Because these are landmines. Sir, um, uh, that's an interesting question. I think um, I'm just going to say that until like some minutes to 12, on the day before the opening, I was still having security meetings. And I had to go to the house of the biggest, you know, the, 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 uh, they call him Oluri Odo. This is the only guy that all the young guys, you know, from all the lords will go to him. I think it's their God, <laughs> you know, wow. they will go to him to bow. So um, I was still waiting, you know, for him um, to, to, to talk to him until I uh, some minutes to 12 before I left for, for my house. And on my way, he called me and said that, oh, 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 um, I, I received your letter uh, and I know it's tomorrow and I'm going to come. He actually didn't come. Um, but um, there was peace. But then after informing him about the festival for him to come, I had to go to the police station. I had to invite the neighborhood wash 
to also be part of this. And, they, you know, they gave me about five people and I had to pay them as well, <laughs> you know. So you, you really have to do a lot to make sure that you organize an event within this kind of community without any chaos, without anybody fighting, without, you know, with this new, um, I don't know what they call them. They call them courties, I, I, but I don't understand what they do. You know, they are constantly fighting themselves and all of that. So um, you have to do a lot for you to put anything on the street. In fact, uh, on the eve of the opening, one of the chiefs called me and said that, oh, they received um, some kind of letter from the from the state that no music should be played. And I said, I'm sorry, sir. Tomorrow is our opening. We are going to play music very loud, but then nobody is going to fight. You know, so, um, and we were able to do that successfully. And I think that next time we go to them, they will trust so that we can organize an event that will not be chaotic, that will not, uh, nobody's going to fight and all of that. So um, in a way, I am also negotiating, constantly negotiating the space constantly negotiating the space. And um, borrowing from the Egogo Festival and uh, Igunu Festival and all of that. Well, anytime that is going to happen, the family will call them, because I come from one anyway, the family will, will, will send Sakula, so to say, and say that, you know, uh, we need money for this festival and all of that. And people will contribute and then they will say, we have Ashwe B and they will you know, do that and people will travel from every corner to, to support their own uh, family and all of that. And that's what we are going to, it, it's one funding structure that we are, we are putting together as well. That maybe from the next edition of the BNR, what we are going to do is to get people even to pay at as little as 15 era. I was going to say that, that. Is it possible to get yeah. them to start paying? It I was is going possible, to sir. That. 15 era would not, okay. because they all, they, now they know us, now they ask for more. You know, when we do perform, uh, when, we, when we put performances on the streets and they pay nothing, uh, they ask for more, you know, and the streets are now coming to request for, oh, you haven't come to our streets. Oh, you have, you should bring some images to our streets. Oh, you should bring this. Oh, you should bring that. So we can actually get them to pay as little as 15 era from house to house. Each family pay 15 era. And I, I'm sure that with that, we can, be, we can fund the uh, festival successfully. We should look mm. for alternative. This is what you taught me, sir. Always looking for alternative way of producing, you know, uh, uh, whatever, you know, look for alternative funding structure. And I'm always for alternative, you know. The festival was an alternative way of presenting arts, you know. And, <laughs> and everything that I've done is always <laughs> about alternative. And I know that with this funding structure that I, I have in mind, I think it will work. 15 era per, per family within the community will not be too much. Mm. And I will get the area boys to collect it so that they trust that. Yes, you know, so they, and they will, so they will have their own share as well. They will have their own shares as well. <laughs> of so course. Maybe they get 20%. They uh, one, 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 yes, 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 yes. So, okay, um, well, I, it's a lot of on Spirit of Nigeria Radio. And I do remember I think the fascinating guy is the, is the one on the hot seat. Um, we're still coasting home. Uh, you are, well, for those who are uh, listening to us on the, the cloud, please just here with us. We, only, we do it on Zoom too, so, but you are hearing us. And, uh, I'm, so I'm sorry you are not able to call in, but we, we're still working on the telephone uh, bit of this. But let me leave the rest of the question to Anote, because we're coasting home. We have less than 20 minutes now to, to end it. And so Anote, you are the journalist. Yes. The house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, first of all, you you tell us exactly when the business show will be the, the banner. When is it going to hold? From when to when? And the, the, the features it actually started. They oh, started, but maybe what's going on tomorrow? And <laughs> okay, fine. Give us a, a rundown of the events uh, and the activities that are that are planned. Uh, oh, then after that, you would I mean borrowing from what uh, Prof mentioned earlier, which. To me, is uh, something that is is huge. You know, that we actually needs unpacking. You know, because when you look at how we organize our traditional uh, festivals and cultural activities on the streets, everybody, you know, possible to get people to pay fifteen naira, you know, as a form of 
their own buy-in. But beyond that, you know, they, they need to see that they are also part owners beyond contributing. You know, so this is like putting you on the spot, but I mean, that's how it is. How will you, what models from the traditional, our traditional festivals would you like to borrow so that the, the community can actually be part owners in such a way that they'll be the one to remind you, ah, I mean, when is the next uh, festival? When are we rolling out? You know, what are those elements would you like to, would you, when you look at uh, your festival, a Google festival, would you like to pick from them? Yeah. I mean, happily you are a grounded uh, uh, homeboy in that community. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Um, well, um, if we look at, let's say we take a your festival, for instance. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of money, you know, for you to put up an um, a demo festival. It's not, it's not, it's not something that you can just wake up in the morning and say that you want to do. That's the reason why they don't do it every year. And I think Fashola try to make it a festival, you know, and I think it's it's a way of you know what watering everything down. They do it to celebrate people. And there is a lot of money that they put into it. I mean, millions, 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 you know, into this. And they generate that money through uh, within the family and through connections and all of that. You know, these people that put up Adimo Festival, they are really rich. You know, you don't just wake up and say that you want to do that. And same thing goes with um, with the Egumo Festival. It's a family thing and people have to contribute. You know, it's our thing and it, it is, they know that it's coming as a social point in, in, in you know, as a social, um, in a particular season. And then every other family within the community will showcase their own, um, uh, their own masquerade. So they have to also represent in a very good way. So people contribute towards that as well. But in this case, it is something that is being presented to them. You know, they are not going to be part of the um, creation. Now, um, because some of them have started seeing some images of people that they know within the community, they started requesting that we make their images. Maybe in the subsequent editions, they begin to see yeah. themselves. Some photographers, you know, that were running studios within the community that I've been talking to in some years, um, since the beginning, actually, since the beginning of the festival, now they are getting to that level of understanding what we do, and they are ready to look into their archive and bring out images of people that they are photographed over the years within the community as well. I think this is a way of, 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 of getting them to own the festival when they know that, oh, they are going to see themselves, they are really part of it and all of that. Um, the, the, the funding structure that I have in mind is also a way of getting them to, to own the festival because um, I really want to move on to other things, just like uh, uh, my daddy said you know, earlier, that doesn't mean that, he's not, uh, that now that I'm into curatorial practice and all of that, does that mean that he's not going to see me make some pictures and all of that anymore? I still do. And I want to practice. I want to continue to practice as a visual artist. Um, but, I, but then I want to continue to uh, produce this, this uh, festival as well. So what I'm, telling, um, what I'm telling the young people within the community is that I want them to own it. And I just come you know, to give advice. And they are all happy. And they see me as a successful young man within the community. And they constantly say that they want to travel abroad as well. So they can do all of that if they can run this festival very well. I'll make sure they travel abroad <laughs> to present their ideas. So, you know, we're having, we are, it, it, it's kind of funny conversations that we have on the streets, you know, with, with the street boys and all of that. But then, you know, those conversations can materialize to something uh, um, realistic, you know, in the future. And um, yeah, basically that's, that's uh, what I'm <laughs> working on. Oh, okay, give us a rundown of uh, activities from, from tomorrow, you know, to maybe the uh, okay. coming week. Yeah, um, tomorrow we are going to have um, the director of the Institute give a paper at the CCTA because we are collaborating with CCA, Center for Contemporary Art Lagos, um, for this particular edition. He's going to give a paper on um, photography. 
Um, I really don't remember the, the title of his paper <laughs> right now. Um, and then afterwards, we are going to have performances. Um, we are going to have performances in the community. Okay, now uh, he's going to give a paper on divine, the title of his paper is Divining an Alternative Visual Framework in Contemporary African Photography. And that will hold at CCA between uh, 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. So, um, and afterwards we are going to have um, different kind of uh, uh, presentation within the community. I think we have two or three, and then we have other events. Let me go, um, because we publish the, we, we publish the program on, um, from 13th, we have a um, sound performance, you know, which is on Monday at 10 a.m. On the 13th, we have Dream Art Center, doing their performance. We, on the 14th, we have value, you know, coming with the performance into the community. Same 14th, we have Tolu uh, Williams. Um, we have Ganeo Ismail. We have um, um, Akpan. We have um, Afiz, you know, for 14th. On the 15th, we have Comuna Explorers. These are companies, these are dance companies, collectives coming. You know, the names sound like one person, but then, you know, you have about, you know, 15 to 20 okay. people coming okay. to the community, yeah, to, to intervene. We have Taiwa Idogbon, you know, on the 14th as well. We have Valerie um, on the 14th as well. We have Ijo Lomo, we have Maswell, we have um, Simi, we have Crown Troop, we have Kofi, you know. So these, they are going to come um, every day until 18th of December, to, to present uh, uh, some interventions within the community. Okay, uh, I, I, I have a question. Uh, uh, okay. Now, Iwaya community at there now, or yes, Bainia, at Bainia, I have to get used to that. You know, Lagos, Lagos, there now is always coming, uh, or is it a Bainia? But it's Bainia because we are, we are English, so it's, it's French that I'm using oh, okay. Yes. Better, okay. Okay. Now you are running uh, in Iwaya. Yes, sir. Now there's the Bariga. Is it called Bariga Art Collective or something? You know, they also have something like a festival. You have Koda, yes. which is a good place of David. Uh, yes. They performed yesterday at, at, um, at the opening. Yes. At the opening, right. Then you have a coach mm -hmm. at Canada. So you have all yes. these pockets of things. Between that, because that for me, Iwaya, Bariga, Makoko, these are they are in the same capital, more or less. Yes, yes. I sir. mean, if, yes, if I were to map the city, so is there some connection among all of this? Because you are all, you are also all friends. You all feature in each other. I know you do things for Chebani, Silas, Kuchata, Kaniwa. You do for Kodava. So how connected are all these? Uh, are they in silos or you, you are connected? We are connected. Uh, is there a collaboration? Uh, yes, uh -huh. there's a collaboration. Yes, there's a lot right. of collaboration going on between Iwaya um, community and Bariga. You know, in Bariga, we have a lot of um, troops. We have a lot of dance collectives. That's what I would call them. Um, and they are doing great. And they have a lot of festivals and all of that. But in Iwaya, we are just starting. We are just five years old. <laughs> in Bariga, they've been there for like 20 years. And you can count about 150 dancers in Bariga alone. In Iwaya, we are just starting. Dancers or and dancers? We have dancers. Dancers in the okay. community. If not 300. They boast of 300, <laughs> but I'm just trying to reduce it to, I mean, professional dancers. The kids that dance in Iwaya today, you know, from um, Kings and Queens um, Collective, they were, they were very young. They're just like in their seven years, five years, eight years, and they, they could do the traditional dance very well. So I'll call them professionals because they are already even traveling abroad and all of that. So there is, there is a lot of collaboration. For me, I think that without, uh, if we don't collaborate with all of these platforms that are already existing, um and just say that we want to be um visual yes uh we are going to continue to do our work but then you know i don't think uh, we'll be so connected to the people because uh people like uh, prof said earlier 
our people are used to these performances, you know, even for festival and, and you know, all these cultural um, troops in Barriga, they come with their own dimension. We can give visual presentation, we can give performance art, but performing art is very important as well. So this is the reason why we collaborate with them, you know, at every edition of the, of the festival. Okay. So I know they're back to you. We're posting what we have done about five minutes. I know Okay. <clears throat> so in terms of uh, institutions, yes. uh, you mentioned uh, CCA. Which other ones are you possibly collaborating with? Or that I will the have uh, programs? The Inlele Institute. Today, uh, we organize a photo walk with them in the morning. And tomorrow they are going to um, organize the conference where the director is going to give a paper, which was the, you know, the paper that I mentioned the title earlier. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that's quite nice. Do you have another question? No. no. I don't think. Okay. I, no, I don't no, want no, to. No, do, uh, Oh, okay, I want to throw me back to the old so that people get to know the trajectory of the federal <laughs> Now, a long time ago, we started uh, what we call the, what eventually became the spoken word uh, or legal poetry, performance poetry uh, movement, more or less, uh, before that comes to join, even before we both collaborated to start uh, what's Club. Can you take off back to that? So people can face your project back to there. So they know that you are not just emerging on the scene. <laughs> that you are a young father, you are a young husband, but <laughs> you are this so I can I can be boasting, I can't be um uh, giving my reeling out my CV in front of you. I am <laughs> no 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 it's not just for the purpose of yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, um, of no, course, um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've always, I've always um, um, go with my, with my dreams. And if I believe in something that is possible, I'll always go for it. I like, I started Poetry Potter in 2006. Um, this was because I realized that the only poetry platform that was existing, you know, at that, at that moment, you know, um, stopped producing um, the events. That was Word and Sound. And for like two years, I was talking to uh, Beautiful Nubia and some people um, like um, Beautiful Nubia, um, Rockway Winla, that we should, we, should, we should start this one again. But then I, I don't think that they, they wanted to continue the project. And that was how um, I, I created uh, another poetry platform called Poetry Porter. And for four years, I ran that project. Um, it wasn't easy, but I was able to do it for four years. And after which I started working with um, 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 cultural advocate Cocos, and we produced War Slam. And yes, we've done quite a lot of poetry projects. We did play with Bentomo Luju. And um, yeah, and then I departed you know, from, from poetry and productions and, uh, and all of that, I just went straight into visual art. And for another four years or five years, um, I left, I left, I left um, poetry, you know, and I left cultural production basically. But now I'm back. <laughs> I've been back since 2016 and I've been doing that. And yeah, yeah. Now I, I call myself um, artist curator. I don't want to, I don't think I can own that title of being a creator, but then artist creator is still something that I can, I can <laughs> defend anywhere, anytime. <laughs> yeah, and I'm doing, I'm doing my bit, I'm trying my bit, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, now, um, the, the, what, what happened in, uh, in, uh, in Germany? Okay, and this would likely be my, be my last question. Uh, there was a very fundamental statement you made about uh, not being so, so succumbing uh, to this. I'm trying not to use the word that is in my head. You know, foreign cultural agents come in, but there's a terrible word in my head, and I'm trying. I'm trying very much not to say because I see I've been I've been a beneficiary of it. 
So this thing that is coming from our brother is very good to British Council. I mean, but we know the agenda. We yes. know that the agenda is to sell their own culture, even though the yeah. potential, which all of us subscribe to, is that they are helping to build ourselves. And we sell ourselves cheap. Of course, you know why we have to stop post yeah, Because of we said, oh, who cannot just be doing poetry and you are paying them so much more money? And the, the director said, look, the people you are fighting for, they came to me to ask for less. So why are you asking me? I said, I'm not asking you to pay. You can't pay them. We're just saying, give them some money so that they come on the transport. They can pay their way back home. They're not feeding them. Don't pay them back home. And so at some point, we don't have to give it. Now, you went to Jam and you've been, you've been on that trip. So many. You even went to Korea, I think. You went to somewhere yes. in Asia. Okay. You've seen all of that. And now you are back, you are doing it your own. What do you think will be your response? As the experiences that you have gone through, will it change? or shape your response to culture, a foreign cultural agency that are still producing culture here. Because our people are still running to them in growth, like almost begging. When I see some of those are yeah. like begging, begging to be given money to, to, to do what? These are 200 million people country with natural resources, with enough human population to even feed. But we have to run to them for all those anyway i don't want to go politics but go ahead <laughs> sir this was my argument in berlin when we had a conference around the white money uh, project this was my argument and one of them stood up in the audience saying that oh you know we have to help africa i said keep your money help your people don't help us we don't need the money we have a lot of money Nigeria is an oil producing country and we have a lot of other, uh, other things, you know, that we make money from. So keep your money. Are you constantly trying to use that money to inflate our, our you know, our, to, 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 to cause inflation in our system? You know, like what is the agenda behind the money that you bring to us all the time? You know, I, 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 I question this money a lot. What is the agenda behind the money? Yeah, sir. Uh, uh, I'm I'm sorry to 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 uh, <laughs> to disagree with you a little bit, sir. There, there there is no pretensions about. They are not they are not pretending anything. They were so, they are they are so direct and 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 I think that is a lot of the problem with a lot of artists and cultural producers in the south, global south is that they don't even read the scripts, so they don't get what they are trying what they are saying to them. We are here to 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 promote our culture, our language first. And our culture before and every other thing. And when you read the report of Gauthier Institute, you see that's what they are doing. When you read the report of um, uh, British Council, that's what they are doing. Every other thing is secondary. And that's the reason why they don't take us serious. We have to find an alternative way of getting funding within our country. We have to find an alternative way of doing that. Because I, I continue to question this amount of money that they you know they, they put in our system every year in year out we get aids also from from all of these um, um, um global powers you know and what are we doing with the money how is the money you know reflecting on our economy how we have to ask a lot of questions don't give us the money anymore and let us you know you know find a way of sorting ourselves out maybe that's the way forward and this is what I'm saying with this project. You know, I would love to be able to raise fund for Tutuola Institute within Nigeria. In fact, you know, with Yoruba people both in the country and in the diaspora, than getting funded by a European body. It has been the project was created by the by the European um, funding scheme. Yes, I'm happy. I'm thankful for that. They were able to push me to that level to create something like that. Now we have to take it to the next level. We don't want your money anymore. It is hard, it's a very hard thing to say, but then I think that by the time artists and cultural producers in the global south begin to understand what it means to tell all of these organizations that we don't want your money, we can actually run our art institutions and art projects by ourselves, then we begin to make a statement. I, I, I know that when uh, when some of your contemporaries and colleagues when they hear you talk like this, they will say say no. 
that you want to yes. supermarket <laughs> because all of them are paid. What does one market for them? I know, <laughs> I know. Because some people have actually, you know, they've mastered we're, we're the not in, proposals we're not and make this money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I didn't let me just talk like this, I'll be surprised. You know, this has been you. I know, thank you very much for being consistent always. We, always like that. Always calling the space the space. Uh, but you know something that I continue to Yes. I don't let me took uh, the picture of Wale Shoenka and Jesse Clark when they reunited. It was the question of a photographer or an artist being at the right spot at the right time. Right. You know, that picture is iconic and I've told you, you have to do a special exhibition at some time in the future. Maybe do a frame of it that we're going to present to the family uh, in yeah. the future. But I continue to thank you for that. Because it just happens, you, you know, when somebody is just hard work, like just happens to be present when that thing happens. It wasn't planned, it wasn't anything. The two of them just met, or even though we skimmed, we didn't even know about the skin. He just had his camera right ready and he shot that picture. I wish I could show it there, but <laughs> no, no one. One of these days, we have to do a major exhibition about, about, about that. But thank you thank very you much. Very for much and for the role yes. that you have played in even community mobilizing. In all those protests, the most of the pictures that are being bandied around today, I was making the statement before you came. Where the picture you took when you joined the street protest during Jonathan fuel uh, fuel subsidy thing, but I'm sure you don't have the time. I've asked you, what do you now feel now that you are that the man that now came in that said there is no subsidy is now the man of subsidy, and now they are putting <laughs> Are you going to join us on the street because we're about to go on the street? <laughs> <laughs> or you yeah. regret taking those pictures and then you were one of the well, ones going to our office. <laughs> thank you, well, sir. Um, um, yeah, um, now I'm, I'm stammering. Like, I know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I able to, to Back to the wrong period and we were given freedom we, we had our agency to be able to do that at that time but then this um, 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 um the president the current president didn't give us that agency they didn't give the youth that agency they killed a lot of people and all of that and um i'm not happy about that but then we now we know who they are and we, we are going to prepare better mm -hmm. for the next time we're going to prepare better i think that we are we are re-strategizing at the moment and, and i'm talking about the youth of the country and it has to happen here. If we cannot take our country back from them and they continue to rule us like this, we are going nowhere. And this is the reason why we will create things for the country that the country was supposed to actually have created by, you know, for us. We get our own water by ourselves. We get our electricity by ourselves. We have, I have to create to our institute for the country as well. You know, we are going nowhere with this kind of system. <laughs> We are going nowhere, okay. and I think that you know they should be ready. So, so have you got a voter scan? That's that's the point. So have you, let me have you got a have you got a voter scan? And are you asking your your friends also have their voter scan? Of course, because that's the only way you can take back the country. <laughs> well, but the point is, thank you very thank you very much, sir. They don't have to vote. People, right. I was talking to some people in Germany, and they said, well, I did not vote for Angela Merkel, and I don't even you know. You don't have to vote, but it's your, your country is your country. You have the right, even if you don't vote, you have the right to say that you are not happy with this. You have the right to put up a protest. You have the right to do all of those things. How do you and make the change? The right. so, is the whole system change that we need? So. Yes, it's not it's not the it's not the charade of voting and all of that. But they already rigged the election. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. so we're not going to go for it. But I'm happy that we we brought uh, Adele. Thank you very much. The cultural state of spirit of Nigeria Radio, where we bring that for the speed. For those listening to us outside of the Zoom room, we thank you very much for spending another evening with us. Next week we'll be back here, uh, and it will be another. I think we're going to bring someone else uh, from that your Agu, the Bariga. Uh, you know, everything now, all the festivals are happening. Now, the main festivals are now happening in Bariga, Iwaya, Makoko, Angu. So, we're going to bring someone else. Thank you, Anote. Thank you for the call. I do the color. And thank you, uh, listeners. I don't let me thank you very much. I'm taking you away from the festival. But we wish you luck on the rest of the program for ICANN. If I can, I'll also show my face. I'm, I'm told there's good things going on there.
I like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> good night, everyone. Uh, yeah, good night. Yeah, so, so TV, thank you very much for being in the background. And Dion for mastering the studio. Thank you, my executive producer. And it's bye. <laughs>